Well, you have a lot of followers of your 1806 That's videos. <laughs> um, and I'll read this quote to you. Um, a commenter even noted that this is not lecture, this is art. Gosh, okay. <laughs> well, if you're going to ask them, what's my system, I have none. <laughs> um, I, uh, I guess, well, first I'd like students and I want to help. And uh, maybe the key point is to think with them, that, uh, not to just say, okay, here it is, listen, listen up. Uh, I think through the, the question all over again as they do, mm -hmm. and, and, it, and you have to give time. You can't zip through a proof uh, because this class has to be sort of thinking with you. And uh, that's, uh, yeah, that's my thought. I don't know if I achieve it, but I think it's the goal. Mm. One of our users on OCW noted um, that during lectures you sometimes ask rhetorical questions or maybe feign confusion um, as a way feign to... Feign like confusion? <laughs> I'm confused. <laughs> Are you? Well, okay. no. Well, no, it's probably true. Um, that's maybe part of uh, not rushing through it. Uh -huh. uh, but getting this, so I'll pause to, at, at a critical point maybe and, and give, you have to give time to, to, uh, to see, okay, what's the next step? Uh, you know, it's, mathematics is beautifully ordered and sensible and logical and linear algebra is not too difficult, but uh, Still, you can't rush. You have to sort of see the idea a few times. Mm -hmm. uh, first, maybe on the board as symbols. But not everybody picks up on symbols. Then you say, what does it mean? And then finally you say, why is it true? Mm. But you don't say, why is it true? Give the proof. The very first step. Yeah, you want to make people think, yeah, it is true. Mm. Right. Others have noted that you do this thing where um, you display your own thinking kind of on the spot as you uh -huh. work through problems. Yeah. Um, is there ever a risk in that for oh, you? Oh, yes. And uh, it happens uh, <laughs> that I lose the thread or I come up to a dead end where I don't know what I'm supposed to do next. But generally, uh, especially in 1806, the basic linear algebra course that many people have watched. Um, that there I kind of get it okay. Sure. Yeah, I've taught it enough times to have a good chance of getting it right. Is this a strategy that you developed over time? I know lots of people are nervous to do that, to you know, make yeah. themselves vulnerable in front of a large lecture class like that, but you're, you're working problems in real time and demonstrating what happens yeah. when you hit a dead end. Well, that's okay, because students are going to hit dead end, so it seems to me it's okay for me to get stuck to, and then give, they see, oh, okay, maybe this, this is the way to get out of that right. corner. Uh, yeah. Uh, so essentially, I think the thing is, I like students, I like math, mm -hmm. and uh, putting them together is just the best job in the world. Mm -hmm. Let's talk about humor for a second. <laughs> okay. You've been known to say things like keep things in their goss-given order <laughs> and I see. other like really funny things that people just love. Um, so mm. what's the role of humor in your teaching? Well, it, maybe it's, which is what I'm saying here, it's maybe the key point is to make it human. You know, you're, you're, you're a person, the, the student is a person. The book isn't quite a person, but it was written by a person. And uh, to, to see that it's just like a natural thing to do. Mm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So one of our users was thinking about how you teach complex material, how you convey it in ways that are comfortable for students. Um, and the user was wondering, how do you know when to go into detail yeah. and when not to? 
I suppose I try to think it through once again, uh, and that then you sort of automatically see the, the word you, you recognize what words you need to use and, and what step what the steps are. Uh, yeah, if you if you don't if you're not thinking it yourself, then you're probably going too fast and not uh, connecting with the the thinking of the class. Mm. And how do you connect with the thinking of the class when it's such a large lecture hall and oh. everyone's at a different point yeah. in their understanding? That's probably true, and of course you don't know what everybody's mm. thinking in that class. But uh, overall, if if you get if you stay uh, sort of conscious of the class, conscious of where they are, um, that's I think the thing for any speaker, mm -hmm. is to be conscious of the audience and not just of A, B, inverse. Mm -hmm. yeah. mm -hmm. What else would you like to add about teaching 1806 linear algebra? Well, with 1806, of course, I'm just um, so a recently open courseware, which I think was just such a great idea. Great idea for MIT, great idea for faculty. Um, so they... Uh, did a count uh, of the number of viewers in 1806, and it was 10 million, uh, which was like, whew, I never expected. And, but I do get nice, really nice messages from all over the world, uh, and I reply to them as far as I can. Uh, uh, sometimes they'll ask, how to, how to, what, what's the good way to learn math? And I don't know if I have an answer for that. But anyway, I'm trying to be encouraging. So, uh, yeah, it's, um, it's been wonderful. Yeah, just the, having the video lectures available uh, makes, uh, allows everybody to be in the class. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So thank you all for joining the class. Thank you. <laughs>